everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Weekly Pulse. Uh, so, good news. Uh, here's the thing that happened. I came in really early today and read a whole bunch of comics, so I'll actually know what happens in the issues. Isn't that exciting? But before we get to comics, uh, some toys came in the store uh, that I want to get you excited about. So Mini Mates, they do these like little versions of things that you like. Comic book characters, movie characters and such. But on this occasion, uh, it's Knight Rider. And uh, you know what, man? I get really excited about the whole Michael Knight with Kit, but you know what's even more exciting? Do I really need to say anything about this? Do I? I don't think so. The goatee and all. These are, uh, how much? $14.99 a piece? It's a steal. You should get them both. That's $30. I like selling things to you. Uh, I swore that I would never tart myself up and, uh, and sell my body in the meatpacking district, district again, but, um... This thing came out, and it is $170. It's the Enterprise D. It apparently comes uh, with a shuttlecraft, too. And uh, it's pretty rad. I mean, like, if you look, you can see, like, what the setup is. It's nice. It's, it's light, so it's, like, you know, not, like, the, probably the highest grade plastic. But the detail, the detail is what sells it. Um, so if you have $170 lying around uh, or are willing to turn tricks like I am to get this thing, uh, totally worth a pickup. But on the comics, uh, so remember last week, I mentioned, by the way, I didn't read everything. So I'm just going to run through things first that uh, caught, my, caught my eye that I'm going to probably pick up and read, and then we'll talk about actual comics that I actually read. Um, so you remember uh, OMAC versus Frankenstein, number five, that was last week. Well, Frankenstein uh, now versus OMAC uh, uh, here this week. Uh, I'm not a big OMAC fan personally, but I love Frankenstein, so this makes a, a worthwhile story for me. Um, Love, uh, love the crap out of Jeff Lemire. Love the crap out of uh, Frankenstein. So these are worth it. What else came out this week that I haven't had a chance to look at yet? I'm going to pull them all at once. Goodness, here we go. Ah, Demon Knight, number five. Why Paul Cornell? That's why. Uh, what else? Uh, the Ray, number two. I really like the first issue. Um, this sort of weird naked sun man. Uh, I don't know why I like it so much. Probably because of uh, Jim and Pagliotti and Justin Gray. Just a guess. Certainly worth a read. Heart, number three of four. I get really jazzed uh, by this uh, Blair Butler book that keeps coming out every month uh, about a UFC fighter. I don't know, maybe it's because it's a guy with a regular Joe job that one day wakes up and decides he's going to beat the crap out of people. I like that kind of story. I don't know why. It's good, though. What else? Doctor Who, listen, the reason why I picked up this one, number 13, uh, and why this might be worth a read for you is because it's the first time that there's a new writer on the book in a really long time. Tony Lee just left great writer, but, uh, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to pick up uh, with what a guy's been doing uh, if he's been doing something for a really long time, like several years, like Tony had. And now that we've got uh, this new fellow on the book, it might be a good place to jump on. I don't care about Transformers at all, I, I must confess, but uh, it's a brand new Transformers series, number one. I know a lot of y'all love IDW doing the Transformers thing, so here's a new jumping on part, brand new number one. Uh, there's that. And uh, I would be remiss, uh, Matt D told me, to bring this up, this uh, Dr. Mentor, which comes with, what, 3D glasses and also, oh my goodness, naked women. Uh, so if you like naked women in 3D, uh, like, uh, like Matt D, our t-shirt uh, ordering fellow and manager, uh, this might be a book for you. Hey, how about those books I did read? So exciting. What do we have? Batgirl, number five. So this is a new jumping on point. Some, it's weird how some of these number fives are jumping on points and some of them aren't. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but this one introduces this new uh, Gretel character. Uh, I'm still digging the art. Um, they're kind of moving away from the mirror story that they had for the first four issues, which, you know, as much as I love that, it's always good to kind of bring in something new. And in this case, the story is... Uh, this girl seems to have the ability to sort of control people uh, and get them to do terrible things. She puts uh, things in their minds, which has been another big theme with a lot of the DC-52 stuff. They've been doing that with uh, Birds of Prey also. Uh, and she just makes them kill each other and then themselves, which is what happens in the opening pages of this book. And from there, Barbara has to go and investigate that. Meanwhile, same time, uh, while that's happening, 
There's also her mother showed up at the end of uh, issue four, and they're starting to deal with the fallout of that since uh, Barbara's mother ditched her and her father some time ago. So this has been a pretty solid read. Um, maybe not my favorite issue of it, but uh, it's a good jumping on point if you haven't been reading so far. Batman and Robin number five. Um, so this is now the turning point where um, Robin has officially turned away from Bruce and is now with this bad dude. Uh, and I, I don't want to get into too many details. It's a solid issue, but they basically start to go into the backstory of how uh, how Bruce knows this guy, why it is that Robin's turning away from Bruce, and it's just a solid. I, just, I like the sort of family quality that this uh, this book brings. I don't know. I've been really liking it month to month, so I still think that this is one of the better Batman books that's coming out right now. Suicide Squad. Here's the deal. Don't pick up this issue. Not because it's bad, but because it ends. Remember, I was talking about how some of the number four is at the end. Well, this is an example where number five is the end of an arc. Um, so if you weren't reading before, you'd be like, uh, I don't understand what's going on. Uh, a pretty solid issue. All you really need to know about it is that it ends with um, with Harley Quinn escaping. She uh, she sort of sets up this, uh, wow, I'm just dropping things, uh, a, sort of like a prison riot that they have to stop. And while they're stopping the riot, she escapes. And so now um, the squad needs to assemble a new team of people that haven't been horribly, horribly killed or maimed and go after her. So while I wouldn't say this is the one to get, definitely I think next month, because this book started bad and now has gotten much, much better. Uh, what else? Scarlet Spider number one. You know, I'm so surprised. I'm not usually a Spidey guy, but now that we've had occasion to have different people be Spider-Man, I find that I can actually get into it. Uh, and Kane, he's a little emo, which I don't love. But he's got a dark quality to him. He's got a fun quality to him, too. I'm really enjoying the artwork. It's just really dynamic. Uh, and you know what? They uh, they give a good backstory on him, like what's happened like in this actual continuity during Spider Island, that whole Dan Slott arc. Uh, and uh, also, the nice thing they do in the back is they actually go through like basically the entire clone saga like in the span of like four pages just to say like hey by the way in case you don't know what's going on which is nice it means so that uh, if you weren't reading like me uh, you could actually read this book and understand what's going on uh, pretty quality stuff uh, I definitely think this is worth a pick up hey here's an example of a book that I would not recommend you buy uh, just because I like to throw those in um, remember I was talking about that girl in the in the Batgirl book wherein she kind of controls what people do uh, well, Whispers, which is by Joshua Luna, uh, one of the two Luna brothers, um, has a similar concept uh, wherein this guy sort of goes out of body and he's able to sort of go to the people. If, if he knows them, he can kind of influence their decisions. And while the concept is interesting and while uh, I like this art more than I usually like the Luna brothers' art, my issue is that there are no likable characters and, uh, you know, I mean, nice art and a good concept is swell and everything, but if you don't like anybody, then why would you read it? And uh, I don't like anybody, and uh, I just I just don't see any reason why anyone would pick up this book, which is mean. Uh, read the Sword instead. That's a great book. Uh, this book, mm, I'll let you know if it gets better. I'll probably check on it in a little while, but this was not that great. Buffy, number five. We moved away from Marvel and DC. I don't know if you noticed. Um... But here we have uh, Buffy, the beginning of our Dark Horse line. There's a whole bunch of Dark Horse stuff here, by the way. A lot of good stuff from them. Big week. Um, this was uh, interesting. Uh, so, George Jonti off the book for an issue. They brought in Carl Moline, which is totally fine. Um, also, interesting about this, if you were a big Buffy fan and were following the Season 8 comics uh, when they started, the number five issue of Season 8 was uh, an episode called The Chain. And this is actually a follow-up to the chain, where a lot of stuff takes place uh, in a dream in this one, but they bring back the fairy character that helps out the fake Buffy in that issue. And uh, in addition to that happening, there's also an appearance by the uh, the first ever Slayer. And um, there's also a setup for a, what I'm guessing is going to be a Willow spinoff, and also a really big surprise at the end of the book, which I don't want to spoil for you. Um, this is pretty good. Uh, Really, the deal with the Buffy comic uh, is that the Angel and Faith comic is way better. Uh, that always kind of brings this one down. But there's some interesting stuff coming up. I don't know if you heard the rumor. Uh, they're going to chop Buffy's arm off, I think, in issue 7. That should be interesting. That's it. Basically, like, these are interesting. Maybe someday they should put 
uh, like an actual comic book writer, like Christos Gage, that they did with Angel and Faith on one of these books instead of TV writers. But even still, um, if you're reading Buffy, I wouldn't stop reading it. Ho! The Strain, number two. Uh, I don't even know what to say other than this is a really great adaptation. The art, solid. Um, the pacing is good. The layouts I really like. Um, it's just, it's it's scary. Like, it legit makes you feel unsettled as you read. Um, it deals with issues of mortality. It's obviously a vampire story um, mixed with that sort of, like, epidemic, that fear of illness, kind of like how you do with the zombie story. It's just good. It's just really, really good. Like, if you weren't reading this, I would say you're insane and should start reading it immediately. Lobster Johnson! Oh, oh my. Um, listen, this is... Even if you never read anything with Lobster Johnson in it, uh, Mike Mignola just this is a great story wherein there's um, this sort of 1930s era depression, and um, I just like it's just a great setup. Listen, I'll put it to you this way: there are gangsters dressed up to be ghost Indians scalping people. Why that's happening? Well, that's a bit of a mystery. Uh, but we've got an intrepid reporter looking into it, and in the background, obviously, is who? It's Lobster Johnson! Uh, man, it's a really good read, just a lot of fun. Like, this is, a, again, every once in a while the number one comes along that you have to, have to, have to pick up. This is totally one of those. And then Dark Matter. Uh, I don't know why I'm finished. I should really finished on Lobster Johnson. That's okay. Don't you worry about it. Um, Dark Matter number one, another Dark Horse book. I like this. Um, I like the art well enough. Uh, what I like more than anything, though, is the story, uh, which has these uh, these these people kind of all waking up. Uh, it feels very alien at the beginning, but none of them have any memories of what's going on. They're trying to figure out what's happening inside of the ship, and they run afoul of uh, what I guess is like an android. Let me see if I can find an image of him. Uh, this is him post. Where is he doing bad stuff? There he is. He's a bad guy. He starts beating them up, and they have to shut him down completely. And just like the rest of them, he kind of effectively has no memory of what's going on. And, um, yeah, all they know is somebody... There's nobody, if there's nobody else on board, it means that somebody kind of had to be the one that took their memories away, which means that one of them is kind of a traitor. So it's very claustrophobic in that alien way, but with a fresh kind of take. I really liked it, so if you're looking for another interesting number one to give a chance to and you like sci-fi, that's a good one. Uh, before we wrap up, I'm going to do two, no, three, my goodness, uh, graphic novel mentions. Do um, so you remember I said before Scarlet Spider number one kind of spun out of uh, Spider Island? Well, here it is, Spider Island, all collected in one big hardbound. Um, I, it's sealed, so I can't open it up and show it to you. But Dan Slott did, a, I mean, a pretty cool story wherein everybody suddenly has spidey powers in the city uh, and how people deal with that. It's a fun idea, and Dan Slott's a really cool guy. Uh, so, if you didn't get a chance to read this when it was coming out, and you kind of want to get into what's happening in the Spider-Man world right now, it's a good story to start with before you jump into something like, say, The Scarlet Spider number one, I don't know, uh, or any of the amazing Spider-Man stuff that's going on right now, which is also good. Uh, so that's that. What else came out? Oh, goodness. Uh, let's go with this one. Young Justice. Uh, so, a lot of uh, parents, I find, come in and pick these things up uh, issue to issue, uh, but if you hadn't, and your kids are fans of Young Justice, well, here it is. Here's the first trade. I have to tell you, uh, what's the price on that? Twelve ninety nine? Not so bad. Thirteen bucks? Could be worse. Uh, this is really good. Uh, not even like even if you're not a kid, you can still at least like it. Where you've got Superboy and you've got Kid Flash and Robin. It's just like I don't know, dude. This is just like simple storytelling, sort of classic comic stuff that you can read to your kids, or you can read on your own, your kids can read on their own. You know, like, just, to, like, it's nice that they finally got around to collecting this thing, is what I'm saying. Um, because most people still read things in trades, especially if they're not big on comics. So, hey, your kid likes Young Justice, the TV show? Buy him Young Justice, the comic. Done. And then we'll drop that book on the ground, because who cares about money, uh, and finish with Batman through the looking glass. And why? Is this worth a mention? Well, it's because it was drawn by Sam Keith. Uh, original graphic novel with a little Sam Keith artwork. I mean, why not? Um, I love Sam Keith. Uh, and if you don't, there's, there's something wrong with you. Uh, so exciting to have 
Sam Keith doing a story, uh, like a completely original hardbound thing. It's how much? Ooh, twenty two ninety nine. Listen, uh, I would say worth every penny, even though that's a lot of pennies. Uh, but yeah, man, totally worth a pickup. Don't worry about dropping things. It happens. It happens, people. But if you drop it, you get to pay for it. Also, I'm done reviewing comics now. So, thank you for watching. Keep reading. Uh, come on down to Forbidden Planet. Uh, and if you can't, fbmyc.com. You can buy all that stuff online. Isn't that swell? Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye.